With this video, I am starting a new tutorial series where I'm going to fully introduce you with a work manager library in Android. This is the first video where I will cover the basics, uh, provide you with some uh, important uh, information about this library, uh, what it is, uh, how it works, uh, how to configure and uh, execute your first uh, background worker, but also how to properly inject your worker with a uh, dagger hit library. And for that matter, we will use a uh, retrofit library so that we can send a uh, get request to the server while our application is in the background or even completely closed. Okay, so what is a work manager? It's an official Jetpack library that is a part of an Android architecture components made by the Android developers team itself. It provides an efficient way to schedule and manage background tasks. Work manager is intended for tasks that require a guarantee that the system will run them even if the application exits or the system reboots, which means it provides a persistence. Work Manager is designed to handle uh, deferable and uh, asynchronous tasks, such as uh, network requests, uh, database operations, or uh, file manipulation that uh, need to be executed even if the application uh, is not actively running. Uh, work Manager handles uh, three different types of uh, persistent work immediate, long running, and deferable. In this video, we're going to focus on uh, immediate uh, tasks that uh, begin immediately and complete soon. Uh, also, those tasks uh, can be uh, expedited as well, but I'm going to talk about uh, expedited work uh, in some of the next videos. Then we have a long running tasks that uh, can potentially run uh, even uh, longer than uh, 10 minutes. And we have a deferable tasks that basically uh, schedules tasks that uh, start at some later time and they can run also periodically as well. Now, the second question that we need to get an answer on is uh, when should we use a work manager? Before I give you an answer on that one, uh, you need to know a couple of things. So, uh, running tasks in a background consumes a battery life as well as a RAM. That is important to know because uh, it can affect the performance of your device. It can result in a bad user experience while uh, watching a video, using a camera, playing a video game, etc. Over the years, uh, Android has evolved and made a couple of useful rules and limitations on a background execution that allows the Android system to preserve a battery life. Like uh, those and the app standby, uh, background location restrictions, background service limits and others. Bottom line, in a modern Android development, some background tasks are delegated to a work manager library because that library is aware of all those restrictions and limitations that the Android system has established. Which is why we don't have to worry about that too much, but we need to know under which circumstances our background work may not work, or may not run, or why it may get delayed sometimes as well. And now uh, we come to the question, uh, when should we use this library? Here is a little graph that uh, shows uh, some cases when this library is a good fit. So a work manager is a recommended solution for a background execution because it has the knowledge uh, about uh, all different kind of uh, background execution limits that we have talked about earlier. If you want uh, to be certain that your task uh, will run for sure, even if it's delayed a little bit, uh, then you should use a work manager. This API allows you to schedule jobs, like uh, one-time jobs that uh, triggers only once, or repeating jobs that can trigger uh, multiple times a day. Uh, and those repeating jobs can be used, for example, to uh, occasionally send some logs to the server or even sync the data with the remote server as well. And you can also chain and combine multiple different jobs as well. But that will be another topic for another video. Okay, so that was a brief introduction with the Work Manager library itself. Uh, I will do more videos in the future explaining different parts of it. But now I think that uh, we should see some uh, practical examples. So let's open up the Android Studio. Alright, so here I have prepared uh, one uh, demo project for this purpose. Now let's first uh, start with a Gradle build file. Here I have a couple of uh, important dependencies that uh, we are going to need. So the first one, of course, is a work manager. Uh, so Kotlin plus uh, Coroutines uh, library. Uh, the second one here is a retrofit. So we are going to use also a retrofit to make a uh, get request to a server uh, from the background by using a work manager as well. 
Uh, and the final dependency here that uh, I have added is a Dire Healed, because I'm going to also show you how to uh, inject uh, certain dependencies in your uh, worker. Now, uh, here I have two uh, dependencies for a Dire Healed, and uh, one more additional dependency that uh, is used specifically for a Dire Healed uh, and uh, Work Manager. Alright, so now that you have specified uh, all of that, let me just here uh, show you uh, some other different uh, uh, things that I have added here as well. So at the moment here we only have uh, one simple uh, main activity annotated with this uh, Android Entry Point annotation because we are using a Dare Hilt library. Uh, here we also have a simple uh, application class that uses this annotation for a Dare Hilt library as well. Um, then we have an Android Manifest file, we have specified that same um, application class. Uh, next here we have a simple uh, network module, which is a Dagger Hilt module that basically provides um, an instance uh, of our um, uh, API service that uh, I have created. So here we are providing uh, OK uh, HTTP, we are providing a JSON factory, and those two are needed for, uh, for a retrofit uh, instance. And the retrofit instance is needed for our uh, uh, demo API. And this uh, demo API contains uh, only one function, uh, that uh, will be used to send a GET request to this specific uh, base URL. It's basically uh, one uh, a demo or a test uh, URL for REST API. And to that uh, server, we are going to send a simple GET request and retrieve a single post inside this response. So a single post basically contains uh, only four different properties, like the user ID, ID, title, and the body. So it's quite simple, right? Okay, now we can close all of that and that as well. So uh, the first uh, thing that we're going to do here, we need to create here a, a custom worker in which we want to uh, specify what kind of a job we want to execute uh, from the background with our work manager, of course. So let's create here a simple class, a Kotlin class with the name of uh, a custom uh, worker. And from here, uh, we need to actually uh, inherit. So let's just here inherit a worker which is a part of um, a work manager, of course. And this uh, worker accepts uh, multiple parameters. The first one is the context, and the second one is uh, worker parameters. So we need to specify also those two parameters right here. So just specify uh, context and also a, uh, a worker parameters. There we go. And now we can pass those two uh, right here. So context and uh, worker parameters. Uh, so context, there we go. Uh, also, now that we have inherited um, this uh, worker class, and now we need to override uh, one function which is called do work. And this uh, do work uh, function will execute uh, from the background whenever we uh, trigger our actual work manager. So this uh, method does uh, triggers uh, to execute some work uh, in the background. And uh, uh, this method also is called on a background thread, but you're required to uh, execute your work uh, synchronously in this case. There is also one more worker which is called a coroutine worker that uh, will basically use this uh, same function, but this function will actually be a suspend function. For now, let's just uh, first implement this uh, regular one, and then I'm going to show you that uh, coroutine worker uh, as well, so no worries there. Now the thing to note here is that this uh, function actually returns a result. And this result uh, can return three different instances, uh, success, failure, and retry, okay? So in this case, we can just, for example, uh, print a simple value, maybe uh, hello from a worker, and then we can return here a result dot success. So we also have retry and failure in case that uh, our code here actually receives some error. But since this is just a simple print uh, function, we can just call here a success and return a successful result. So don't worry, I'm going to show you also how to inject that uh, same API and uh, trigger that uh, GET request uh, from our worker. But for now, let's just first um, see this uh, one uh, simple example. So let's go to the main activity. And here before this uh, send content, I'm going to just uh, uh, basically initialize this uh, work request and uh, trigger that worker. So the first uh, thing before we actually uh, enqueue our work uh, with the work manager, we need to create a work request and describe what kind of a work we want to actually execute. So first let's create here a variable uh, work request. Uh, here I'm going to call a one uh, time work request builder. So uh, as I already mentioned earlier, there are two different types of uh, workers so, or work requests actually. So there is a one time and uh, periodic as well. 
In this case, I'm going to focus on uh, this one-time worker request. So let's just call here this uh, builder. Let's specify our uh, custom worker that we have just defined. Okay. And to this work request, we can also specify a couple of different uh, properties or actually call uh, different uh, functions. So here for now, I'm going to define this uh, set initial delay, um, which means that uh, our work that we're going to start here will be delayed for a certain amount of time. In this case, I'm going to call here a uh, duration of seconds, and I'm going to delay that maybe for uh, 10 seconds, okay? Now, this uh, off seconds, of course, require um, a greater API version. You can use uh, the sugaring library if you want to remove this um, this uh, warning without increasing your API level. But in this case, I'm going to just add this require annotation. There you go. And the second uh, property that I want to specify with this work request uh, will be a uh, back off uh, criteria. So let's here call set uh, back off criteria. Now, this function sets uh, two different parameters. The first one is a back off policy. I'm going to explain uh, each one of those parameters, but first let me just here call uh, back off policy. So here we have uh, two different choices. We have a linear and exponential. In this case, I'm going to choose a linear and I'm going to explain you uh, the difference between them. And the second one is a duration, uh, which I'm going to uh, just uh, copy from here. So duration uh, of this uh, back off policy will be maybe, let's say, 15 seconds. So now you might be wondering uh, why do we need this uh, back off criteria and this uh, back off policy? So when this back off policy is actually triggered? Well, this uh, back off policy will be triggered whenever we uh, return uh, a retry result from our worker. Okay? And whenever we want to retry our worker, for example, when our worker uh, has failed for some reason and we want to retry that uh, work, uh, in this work request, we actually describe uh, when that uh, work will be retried and uh, what kind of a policy we want to apply to that uh, same job. In this case, we have described that we want to uh, set the duration of when our worker uh, should be uh, repeated to a 15 seconds. So after our work uh, has failed and we have retrieved here or returned here a retry uh, result, then after 15 seconds, we want to try that again. And the minimum duration that we can specify here is uh, 10 seconds, I think. And this back of policy here, uh, linear, means that um, if our work, uh, for example, failed or uh, retries uh, uh, multiple times, then we want to retry this uh, same work by using this uh, same duration. So, for example, if we uh, retry that work in you know, 15 seconds and uh, it fails again, we're going to retry that uh, uh, all over again with the same duration that we have specified here. Uh, but if we specify here exponential, uh, that means that uh, if our work um, actually retries for the first time, then we're going to use this duration right there. But if our work uh, actually retries the second time, then the duration here will not be a 15 seconds, it will be a 30 seconds instead. And of course, if our work uh, actually retries for the third time, then our uh, worker will not be delayed for 30 seconds, it will be delayed for 60 seconds instead. So it's basically doubling uh, on every retry, okay? And of course, there are more uh, different um, uh, properties that we can modify with this work request, but for now, I'm going to just um, uh, build that. So let's just build this work request. And below that, we can call a work manager. Uh, dot uh, get instance so that we can actually get an instance so just call here application context and let's call enqueue function so that we can actually enqueue this um, this work let's call here this work request there you go and now i'm going to uh, launch this application to show you how will that uh, actually work just so you know of course um and this uh, worker will be delayed uh, initially for the 10 seconds. So this worker will not uh, start immediately after we start our application. Instead, it will start uh, after a uh, 10 seconds. So you'll see about that. Okay, so our application is starting. Let's just uh, open up the locket so that we can actually observe um, our worker. So this worker will be delayed for a 10 seconds that we have uh, specified in that uh, work request. Let's just wait until that delay is uh, triggered. There you go. And we have received here that the print hello from worker. Okay. And the worker result is success, of course. Now, uh, what we can do here, let me just show you. So we can also uh, launch this um, application once again. And we can close this application before uh, this uh, worker has started. Okay. And even if our application is destroyed, this worker has actually enqueued itself, which means that uh, it will complete for sure. 
as you can see down below there we go so even after we have closed our application completely this worker is successfully enqueued and persisted which means our work will eventually start okay so that was a pretty simple example uh, now i'm going to also show you how we can uh, uh, do the actual work and uh, create a network request with a get request protocol to uh, actually retrieve some data from the remote server and we're going to do that uh, from our uh, uh, custom worker as well now the first uh, thing that we need to do here uh, we need to actually uh, inject that the uh, same uh, demo api that we have specified uh, within this uh, gradle or sorry uh, their hilt module okay now uh, to be able to inject that we need to here actually add a new parameter right so so private uh, vol that will be an api of a type of a demo api and uh, what we need to do here we need to uh, annotate this uh, custom worker with um, hilt a worker annotation okay and after that we also need to add here uh, one uh, more annotation uh, assisted uh, inject and then we need to inject that into our constructor right so uh, besides that we also need to add here uh, this um, assisted annotation to each and every property or parameter that we have in our custom worker so let's just specify all those uh, annotations right there okay uh, the next thing here we need to call um, let's remove this uh, println we can just call here um, for example try and catch block in this uh, first uh, try block i'm going to call uh, api.getPost so that we can actually make that get request now here we are receiving a uh, one warning saying that this is actually a suspend function so in order this to work we need to uh, inherit here from a different worker which is called a coroutine worker and this coroutine worker of course contain a different uh, uh, function definition so that we can actually add here a suspend function there we go so the next thing i'm going to here actually store the result uh, inside a variable named response down below i'm going to say if this uh, response is actually successful uh, then i'm going to return here a uh, result uh, dot success so if our response here is successful then i'm going to return here a successful result right and if this response is not successful uh, then i'm going to return here a uh, error or a failure actually there you go let's just here uh, re uh, leave this return keyword um, outside of those uh, two bodies there you go i'm going to here log uh, uh, messages so here i'm going to say uh, success and then i'm going to print those uh, values so if our response is successful i'm printing success result and i'm also logging uh, those information from that uh, same post that we have retrieved and if we have failed here for some reason i'm going to return here um, a message saying uh, retrying and here i'm going to return a retry result actually and if we actually get some exception only then i'm going to return here a um, uh, failure result so i'm going to here type uh, error and here let's return failure so now uh, let's try and uh, launch our application so that we can see if this worker uh, will start successfully or not let's open up here the locket let's wait uh, 15 seconds so here now you will see uh, that we have received a no such method exception for our custom worker and the reason why is because that uh, it's not enough to actually mark uh, our custom worker with uh, all those annotations in order to inject this uh, demo api or any other different dependency in this case we need to uh, configure a couple of different things in our uh, my application or our application class as well so the first thing that we need to do here in our application class we also need to uh, implement one more class so let's call here a configuration from our uh, work manager class dot provider and this uh, interface has one function which is called a get work manager configuration and here we need to uh, manually uh, customize this uh, work manager configuration and specify that the same dependency that we are injecting in our worker so for that purpose here we also need to create a one a new custom class for our uh, worker factory so let's here uh, call and create a class with the name of a uh, custom worker factory let's implement here a worker uh, factory class and of course we need to implement here a function create worker now uh, in this um, create worker function we need to return the actual worker that uh, we have created so in this case that's a custom worker and to this worker we need to pass uh, three different parameters from which the first one is our actual dependency 
So in this uh, custom worker factory, actually, we need to uh, inject a constructor. So let's call here uh, inject a constructor and we need to create here our uh, uh, API. So demo API and then here uh, as a return type or a return result of this create worker function, we need to pass uh, those parameters like uh, our API, uh, the application uh, context and the uh, worker parameters as well. And now in this uh, get work manager configuration, we need to configure our work manager. So let's call here uh, configuration.builder. We need to specify here a couple of different properties. I'm going to specify for now only uh, two of them. So set a minimum login level. I'm going to specify here log.debug. And I'm going to call here a set worker factory and specify this uh, custom uh, worker factory that we have just created. Okay. Uh, but as you can see, we cannot pass that directly uh, like that. We need to actually inject this uh, custom worker factory. So let's just here um, create one um, uh, late init variable with a uh, inject annotation. So let's call here worker uh, factory and let's specify our uh, custom worker factory. And now we can pass this worker factory right here. Then we can just call here build function and um, we can just return this result. Okay. There you go. And basically that's um, almost everything that you need to do to actually uh, specify a custom configuration for your uh, worker. In this case, we have described how to provide now uh, this uh, instance of our demo API to our custom worker by specifying this uh, custom configuration. There is only one more thing that we need to do, but let me first run this application and show you that our application will actually not work again. Okay, so our application has started and now I'm, expect I'm expecting to receive here uh, one more uh, crash actually. Let's just wait. Okay, so we have received that uh, same um, error. Now what we need to do here, we need to uh, add one more um, uh, thing in our Android manifest file. So here we need to add this um, uh, provider tag and specify those uh, three attributes. So if you are wondering uh, why do we need that, well, let me open up here the official documentation and show you. So when we are providing our own uh, custom configuration for a work manager, we need to remove a default initializer. And we are removing that initializer by specifying this uh, provider tag in our Android manifest file. Okay, so that's the reason why. And uh, now after all of that work, let's finally try and actually uh, launch this application so we can see whether now uh, our worker will successfully start in our application. So let's just wait uh, a few more seconds to start this worker because we have that initial delay. Okay, so we have received here an error response actually. And inside that error response, okay, so here I have printed the error and our work manager actually returned a successful result. So let me just see. Uh, what this is all about. Maybe I have missed something. Uh, okay, so here I have forgot to remove this uh, initial um, uh, result that we are actually uh, returning. So let's just remove that re uh, successful result. And here we can add a return keyword on our failure result. Let's just here uh, lift our return uh, keyword to this try block as well. And now uh, let's try actually running this example. Uh, okay, so let me just actually do one more thing. In our catch block, whenever we uh, catch uh, some exception, I'm going to return this failure result, but to this failure result, I'm going to also pass some data. So we can pass here a data object. So let's just call here a data uh, dot uh, builder. And uh, inside this builder, I'm going to call a uh, put a string function and put a uh, key and value pair. The key will be error and uh, the value uh, will be the actual error that we are receiving from this um, uh, catch block. So let's just here call uh, error dot um, to string, right? And let's call here a build at the end. Okay, so after we receive here some error, we are logging this error and we are logging this uh, exception as well. So now let's try and running this application. Let's observe the locket, of course. Uh, wait uh, 15 seconds to start our worker. Okay, so now we have received here an error. And the reason why is because I have actually disabled here an internet connection and we are not able to send a get request to that server. So we have received an error. And here, as you can see, we are also returning that the failure data. So uh, in this case, it says uh, unknown host exception, unable to resolve this uh, host that we are trying to access. So 
For that case, we can just here also specify maybe one if block and say if this uh, exception is a type of uh, unknown host exception. In that case, we can actually retry uh, this, uh, this worker. And if that error is uh, something else, in that case, we can return here failure. So now let's just uh, try to uh, launch our application once again. Uh, let's observe the logget. So wait uh, 15 seconds. Our um, worker will start. Uh, we're going to receive here retrying because we don't have an internet connection. So we can also, of course, just, just uh, close this application and our worker will continue to, uh, to respond um, to our log as well because our worker is actually running on a background thread in the background. Okay, so let me just scroll down below. So we are retrying once again, as you can see. And now I'm going to actually enable an internet connection to our device. So let's just wait until this uh, retry uh, triggers once again after that uh, back of policy delay or duration. So let's just wait uh, until our job uh, or worker starts once again or retries once again. So as you can see here down below, now we have received a successful result, okay? Because now we have received back that internet connection and we are able to make that uh, actual request. And of course, if we type here this uh, custom worker uh, tag, we can see that uh, we have successfully retrieved that data. So ID number one and the title is this some uh, random title that we have received uh, from that uh, server as well. So you have seen how this um, uh, work manager actually works. You have seen how this uh, back off criteria or this uh, back off policy actually works. So after we have retried uh, our worker for a um, couple of more times and we have received back an internet connection, but then our worker has succeeded. And of course, in this case, I have used a linear back off policy to uh, retry this um, a worker after 15 seconds. But if you have used that uh, exponential uh, policy, then your worker would uh, trigger not for a 15, but a 30, 60, 120, and so on and so on. So in the future, I'm going to upload uh, some more videos about uh, Work Manager uh, library as well. So be sure to comment down below and let me know what you think about this library in general. And of course, I like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that will be all.